I respect you massively for being very scientific about this approach, whereas me as an ex-research scientist, I haven't got time to wait for, you, you know, all of this ridiculous bureaucracy and red tape to let the deuterium studies come through. I, I want to take my health in my own hands now, and quite a lot of my audience will. Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah, and in this video, I had the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Gabor Shomalai, who is a molecular biologist and an expert in cancer and deuterium, and he has over 30 years research experience, many publications and clinical studies. I asked Dr. Somalai to explain cancer and deuterium in layman's terms if he, as if he was talking to my mother, as well as explaining in more depth with a professional overview of his research clinical application so that researchers and doctors can benefit from this video as well. We discussed deuterium and its role in cancer and how deuterium depletion is a safe and non-toxic method for tackling cancer and other chronic diseases such as diabetes and obesity. Dr. Gabor has a book on deuterium depletion, which goes in a lot more depth than this interview and has protocols, and the links are in the description. You can now join this channel to get perks like priority and detailed answers to comments, and this helps me make more content and get more guests on the channel. I have a new course out on minerals, as mineral deficiencies and excesses can cause things ranging from mood disorders, low energy, hormone imbalances, food cravings, and minerals are often completely overlooked. Um, and a lot of people aren't even aware of the benefits of just something like good quality sea salt. So the link's in the description and use code Sarah for 15% off. If you want to work with me, I've got a very affordable monthly coaching group with live Zooms and an open forum. So that aside, let's dive in to our discussion on cancer and deuterium. Thank you very much for coming on the channel. Do you want to introduce yourself? My, my name is Gabor Shomyai. I am a molecular biologist. I graduated very long ago, 1982. And uh, the reason I went to became a biologist because my plan was to work on cancer research, hoping that we can get add something to the that research field, hoping that 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 can help people to be cured. So finally, I had a good idea when I was a student that was based on the deuterium hydrogen. And, and that uh, research started more than 30 years ago. Uh, we have published several papers uh, in that field. We have tested in clinical trials and in a prospective retrospective study. So we are pretty sure about that, that if we want to solve the cancer problem, we have to integrate that type of uh, research, what we have published and discovered uh, to the existing therapy and that way we will be very happy and, and, and successful in, in cancer therapy. Because I know you've got data that you followed over 2000 patients and also because I worked in scientific research I know that certain areas aren't funded and deuterium is so important yet there's limited funding um, in that area because I know didn't you have to start a company at some point to be able to get funding or was that Dr. Borosh? Yeah, it, so we are facing with two difficulties. First, uh, the science part. The other, how can we convince the world, the, the scientific community, and even the farm industry that we, that they have to uh, check out our discovery and, and integrate into the uh, drug development. So the science part is it looks easier because if we carry out experiment one by one, proving uh, the data and proving the the if efficacy or or the consequence of deuterium depletion that way we can proceed and sooner or later the scientific community accept the data and if we check the pubmed searching for deuterium depleted water there are over 200 uh, paper published in the last uh, 30 years and the number is increasing which means that starting with our very first paper published in 1993. After that, slowly more and more scientists uh, uh, joined to that research field and did different type of experiment with deuterium depleted water, checking the possible role of deuterium in the living organism. Uh, and, and of course, our company targeted to develop human cancer drug. 
And the other difficulty is the funding part. So we know that to, to register a cancer drug, it takes about and costs about 1 million, $2 $1 billion. So we started with $1,200, that type of uh, project. And to, to cover the, the, the expenses, we came out with a product, which is a deuterium depleted drinking water, and the revenue was used up to, to support the research and, and move forward, collecting new data and collecting, uh, uh, following the patients who had been consuming DW. And that, that is the situation where we now. So we invested about over 20 million euros uh, at that type of research. We completed toxicology safety study. Uh, we have a GMP facility to produce deuterium depleted water. So we are ready to start clinical trials with, with different type of cancer. But, but on the other hand, now we need about 10 million or 15 million euros to start a double bind phase two randomized clinical trial. And then we are waiting for that, that type of fund. Yes, because uh, your company, it's Preventer Water, isn't it? Am I correct? Is that the duty? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, this is our brand. Yeah. Yes, uh, because it's good to know that um, if people buy your water, it's going, all the money is going back into research, into this really vital um, component of cancer. Because I think, uh, first of all, it's very clear that this is something very important um, and the mainstream is missing the deuterium. So maybe if you could explain to people who have never heard of deuterium, say, for example, my mother, if she had been diagnosed with cancer and you wanted to tell her what deuterium was and why it's part of her cancer, how, how would you in, in sort of simple ways? And, and then we'll go into more detail later so that people who already know what deuterium is can get some more information. The deuterium was discovered almost a hundred years ago. The deuterium is a heavy hydrogen. People have heard about maybe heavy water. It means two deuterium binds to the one oxygen. And the deuterium mass number is two comparing with the normal hydrogen where the mass number is one. In a nature, the ratio between the hydrogen and deuterium is about 6,600 to one. And everybody knows that this is the ratio between the hydrogen and deuterium. And everybody knows that due to the 100% mass difference, these two hydrogen behaves differently in chemical reaction. So uh, uh, o, o hydrogen or OD bond, there is a tenfold difference in the speed how that uh, bond can break up. And it is called isotopic effect. So for, for almost 100 years, thousands of paper was published uh, and proving the isotopic effects, which means all the chemical reaction is much slower with the deuterium. Uh, and it was clear. The, the, the key issue was, I guess, that, that 6,600 to one, the people believe that we can ignore it. And nobody addressed the question whether that the deuterium may have some role in the living organism. And maybe the, you, during the evolution, the deuterium has some role in the regulatory system or whatever. And the point is, if we explain the concentration of deuterium in millimoles, so when somebody go to the doctor and checking the blood count, they will see that the calcium level is about 2.5 millimole. This is a, a best range. The magnesium about one millimole, but the deuterium concentration in our body is about 12, 13 millimole. So here is an element, the heavy hydrogen in our body, which concentration is six times higher than the calcium in the blood. And nobody investigated whether it's, it's necessary to be there or, or what will happen if we increase or if we reduce the deuterium level. So my, I always say a, a successful uh, research started a good question. So my, my question was whether the life billions of years used out that there are two uh, hydrogen in nature. These two hydrogen behaves differently in chemical reaction. And because all my life is based on billions and billions of chemical reaction, what will happen if we modify the ratio between the hydrogen and deuterium? So when I started my research at the Hungarian Institute of uh, Oncology, uh, I prepared deuterium depleted water in my garage. 
And, and I bring that deuterium depleted water to the research institute and tested uh, the cancer cells, cell growth in vitro. So I prepared media for cancer cells and checked whether I can modify the growth rate of the cancer cells. And it was surprising that deuterium depleted water inhibited the growth of cancer cells. And then we transplanted human breast cancer to, into mice. And one group of mice consumed normal water, the other group of mice consumed deuterium depleted water. And we saved 60% uh, of the life of that mice uh, uh, drinking deuterium depleted water. And this is the very first paper uh, we published. So we proved that deuterium depleted water inhibited cancer cell growth, and we could cause uh, the necrosis of the tumor in mice. But in my very first experiment, and we also published it, I used not only deuterium depleted water with 25 ppm, so that 6,600 uh, to one ratio means 150 ppm, which means if I take 1 million hydrogen, we will find 150 deuterium uh, within that 1 million hydrogen population. This is a parse per million. So uh, we checked in vitro 25 ppm, so extremely low deconcentration, but I also checked on 300 and 600 ppm, which is an deuterium enriched media. Mm -hmm. And the point was that uh, the deuterium depleted water inhibited cell growth, but 6, 300 and 600 stimulated the cell growth of the cells. So the concept was when we, when we published that paper 30 years ago, that based on the research which was made and carried out several other scientists, that everybody agreed that when a growth hormone bind to the membrane, uh, receptor that will stimulate a sodium hydrogen antiport system. That means that the cells transport one hydrogen out of the cell and pick up one sodium. And everybody agreed that when a growth hormone binds to the membrane that stimulate that uh, transport system, it means that the hydrogen ion concentration will decrease in the cell. And everybody agreed that that somehow is a signal for the cell to multiply and start the cell division. So in our paper, we concluded when the growth hormone binds to the membrane, stimulate the hydrogen transport system, that will prefer to eliminate the hydrogen. It means immediately the deuterium level ratio will increase within the cell. And we concluded that the final signal for the cell to start the cell division is a higher DH ratio. So when we apply in deuterium depleted water, the cells are not able to lift up the DH ratio to the threshold, which would trigger the cell division. So that was the very first paper we published and concluded based on our data. That's and, very easy for anybody to understand that when the cells are low in deuterium, they have normal growth. And when they're high in deuterium, it, it, it's excessive growth. And again, a simple lay person like my mother would understand that. Also, you mentioned about deuterium being different to hydrogen, as in it, it naturally in our body, it's in collagen because it can give rigidity. But the actual texture of a tumor, it's very dry, isn't it? And, it, and it's and it's like and it's hard and hydroxyproline's involved. So it, it, when people have measured tumors, have they actually found that there's more deuterium in the actual tumor mass? Yeah, uh, we had, we, we tried to measure, but we, we couldn't conclude that. But what we, yeah, so if we move forward, what kind of evidence we can uh, show that this is a real mechanism? We just recently published a paper when we tested over 700 gene expression, changing the deconcentration. And we know that the, the big pharma and small pharma looking for a given gene and finding some mutation in that gene and the target is to find a molecule which somehow can interact with that product of the gene and hoping that can be a, a good drug so the very first was a tyrosine kinase everybody was happy when bishop published that tyrosine kinase has a relationship with the cancer and and there are 
later it turned out there are hundreds and thousands of tyrosine kinase, but there are a couple of good tyrosine kinase drug, which is inhibited the given tyrosine kinase. But the, the question is, uh, when we think about how the cell is able to, to organize that extremely complex system, what we call life, that in, in a single cell, talking to uh, your mother, which, which size is about 40 micrometer. And within that 40 micrometer, there is a 10 micrometer nucleus. And that nucleus contains 1.8 meter length DNA. And it is packaged in the nucleus. And, and the 25,000 genes ep, uh, suppression expression is perfectly coordinated and regulated. So that cannot be regulated on a molecular level. So what we say now that the deuterium hydrogen ratio is a key. We say that when the hydrogen deuterium hydrogen ratio is changing, that simultaneously will influence all the molecules, all the proteins, and all the genes in the in the cell. So when we tested that 700 genes, the question was whether we can modify the expression of these genes. That was over 500 kinase genes and over 200 cancer-related genes. So we kept the cells on deuterium depleted media, 40 and 80 ppm, normal media, 150 ppm, and 300 ppm, deuterium enriched media. And the point was that 99% of the genes uh, responded to the higher deconcentration. So what I it means they activated the higher D level activated and increased the expression of, of these genes. So when at the first part, I mentioned that when the growth hormone bind to the membrane, activate the hydrogen transport system, that will increase the DH ratio in the cell. Now, based upon that gene expression study, we can say that simultaneously will trigger and increase the expression of, of hundreds of genes having key role in the cell, cell co-regulation. So it means when we use deuterium depleted water, we inhibit not one tyrosine kinase, not one genes which is connected with the cancer, but simultaneously we can suppress all the all the gene sets. And this is how finally the deuterium depletion can be so effective in 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 the in the therapy. Yeah, that makes sense. So rather than people thinking that tumors have got deuterium in them, deuterium and hydrogen act as switches like a binary code. So you can imagine that when the ratio is wrong, the information that goes to the, the, the nucleus is incorrect because it, the deuterium created the wrong signal and signaled growth. So, so that's a very um, good e explanation for people to follow. It's crystal clear. But, but also my mother would know what a mitochondria is as well. So that's another really important part of deuterium is that if we have poor mitochondrial function, that's linked to cancer as well. So we've got the next layer of why deuterium is uh, problematic or is a primary um, sort of cause of cancer. That is a good question. Yeah. So the question is, where is the brake system in the cell? Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that uh, one common feature of cancer cells is the damaged mitochondria. And again, since Warburg, it's a well-known fact that and nobody knows whether the re cause, reason, effect, what is the first, whether the mitochondria is damaged and that is the reason that the cells became cancerous or vice versa. But what we say now that in our body, the deconcentration depends on two things. What is the deconcentration of the water we drink and what is the deconcentration of the food that we eat? When we eat the food, the mitochondrion burn it to carbon dioxide and metabolic water. So everybody every day synthesize about 0.4 liter metabolic uh, water. The question, what is the deconcentration of this metabolic water depends on what is, what is the composition of the diet. The people eating more carbohydrate, it means the metabolic water concentration will be close to 150 ppm, which is a normal deconcentration. But when, if the people eat more fat, that will produce 118 ppm uh, deconcentration of the metabolic water. 
So based on the composition of the diet, that will determine the deconcentration of the metabolic water in the mitochondria. And I think, and this is what I wrote in the book, that the key mechanism in the cell, the membrane transport is going to increase the DH ratio. That is necessary to start the cell division. But in a healthy cells, a properly working mitochondria is producing deuterium depleted metabolic water. So this is a break. They are against to increase the DH ratio to the threshold. And in a healthy cells, these are in balanced. When a healthy cells need to multiply, they can trigger, reach the threshold, and they multiply. But because all the cancer cells has a damaged mitochondria, it means no deuterium depleted metabolic water production in the cancer cells. So no break. Whenever the growth hormone bind to the membranes, stimulate the sodium hydrogen antiport system that very easily can lift up the DH ratio to the threshold and the cell will multiply and they will divide and the cell population growing, growing. And finally, we will uh, diagnose the tumor with one centimeter in diameter. So we have two ways to, to control the cell growth. First, change the diet and I think this is the biggest problem in the society that 50, 60 years ago, it was said that the, the fat is bad. So don't eat any fat because heart detect and all the thing. So it is, it's, so according to the protocol today, it is said that 60, 70% of the calorie intake covered with carbohydrate. It means the population today leaves a much higher average deconcentration. And I guess this is the reason that the incidence of cancer is increasing. This is the reason that the, the uh, diabetes and metabolic diseases is, is increasing because we are living with a higher deconcentration. And, and this is a key. Finally, we have to modify, we have to reduce the average D level with a 10, 15 PPM. That way we can uh, improve our metabolism and that way we can we can prevent and reduce the incidence of cancer. Yeah, that's a great explanation because I know you did some studies where you dehydrated fats and carbohydrates. And just to make it simple for people, the fats are about 110 to 120 parts per million. And then um, glucose can be 150 to 155. So even in very simple terms for people, ideally, we want our bodies, say, to be about 130 to 140. So it's in very, very simple maths sugar and glucose is going to raise your deuterium uh, levels into an unhealthy range into the 150s and fats are going to bring your deuterium level down. Um, then, as you said, the mitochondria are pivotal here because the deuterium can break the ATPase. But just before we move on, maybe if you want to explain to people what a tyrosine kinase is, because I know that it's something that adds phosphate, but maybe to just very briefly say to people what these ty what these tyrosine kinases are and why activating them is a problem, because they may not know about downstream growth effects of these kind of receptors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very. I think we should think about the the regulation of the cell growth just like a traffic in a big town, which means there are lots of participants in the in the traffic, and there are rules when you can move forward, when you have to stop, and altogether the the traffic is moving uh, perfectly in in a in a town, uh, and the. the tyrosine uh, kinase, phosphatase, and, and thousands of uh, uh, enzymes, each of them has one function, putting up a phosphor group to a, a given protein or taking out uh, a, a phosphor group from another one, and all together harmonize all the processes in the cell. So uh, going back to Bishop, so if the tyrosine kinase gene is is multiplied and activated. It means they became very active. They, in a one direction, uh, stimulate one process within the cell. And the consequence can be that at the end, the cell can uh, go 
move forward and from G1 uh, stage goes to the S phase and start to multiply the, the DNA and double the DNA. And at the same time, and this is the biggest difficulty is to, to find the drug to cure cancer, will not be any drug to cure cancer because there are so many steps and there are so many key steps in that regulatory system, just uh, targeting one that will not affect and uh, uh, the whole system. And this is the difference between deuterium depletion and, and uh, existing uh, cancer drugs. So we have to simultaneously intervene into that system and and this is what we can do with the deuterium depletion. And not only the kinase, kinase tyrosine kinase will be modified, but other participants of the of that whole system. So this is, I hope. Oh no, that's a great December. answer. Because what this says now is that we have control over our deuterium. F fair enough, deuterium in our drinking water is going to vary from how close we are to the equator, but we can control our way of eating. And also we can buy deuterium depleted water and you can deplete deuterium as well by exercise and sweating. So, so maybe you want to now talk a little bit about your studies and your patients and what kind of cancers they had, what your uh, people can... Uh, grab your book um, because I've read it and it's got protocols in it and it's go and it goes into lots of detail. But maybe if you'd like to talk about your work and your clinical experience, uh, so that people can see that it's very it's very practical. They don't need to take the deuterium depleted water is not a, not like a pharmaceutical, even though it's a licensed um, drug for animal cancer. That's correct, isn't it? But it but it's something natural. And maybe if you want to w w talk about your thirty years worth of uh, of patients. Yeah, so so if we want to get a cancer drug, we need to complete a phase two double my clinical trial, and we were lucky that we completed one with a prostate cancer population. Uh, more than 20 years ago, when uh, the treated group consumed 85 ppm deuterium depleted water, the placebo group consumed the normal water, and the, the water was marked with a number, and nobody knows which number means the deuterium depleted water and the, and the uh, uh, placebo normal water. So that study lasted for, for four months. Uh, the reason was that another person with inoperable prostate cancer uh, before the clinical study consumed DW, and one month later, the doctors couldn't palpate the the, the tumor in the prostate. So I, I, I saw that four months should be enough to prove the efficacy of deuterium depletion. When we closed the clinical trials, we saw that there was 80% decrease in the tumor marker value of the PSA in the treated arm, and that was only uh, 47 percent decrease in the PSA. But more importantly, there was 160 cube centimeter decrease in the prostate in the treated arm, and that was only 50 cube centimeter in the placebo arm. And even more importantly, when we checked the survival of after a year, we found that uh, two people died out of 22 in the treated, but nine in the placebo group. So it was clear that reducing the D level for four months, that caused the shrinkage in the prostate tumor, that reduced the tumor markers and increased the survival of the patients. Unfortunately, the authority did not accept it, that, that data. So after that, we couldn't start new clinical trials. And but we, first we we registered deuterium depleted water as a, as a cancer drug for veterinary use. So the vets use it roughly 50% of the dogs and cats. We can cure just replacing the normal water with, with DW. But uh, as to finance our research, because nobody wanted to support us, so how crazy can be curing cancer with water? And I understand that. So we came out with a product with using DPD drinking water and those who shared with us the data and the test results, I started to follow them. And so what we, and, and we published papers with breast cancer, lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, just recently with glioblastoma. And I started that the glioblastoma is one of the worst type of cancer type. Uh, it's a one type of uh, brain cancer, very 
short, median survival time. So we evaluated 55 uh, patients consuming DDW with uh, glioblastoma. Typically, the median survival time, which means uh, what is the time frame within 50% of population is still alive? It's about 10, 10, 12 months with the glioblastoma. So when we check the median survival time of these 55 uh, 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 cancer patients, we increased up to uh, 36 months. But when we separated this 55%, whether the DDW were were consumed at the same time with the radiotherapy, then the median survival time increased up to 47 months. So it means we can get a three, four fold increase in median survival time if we can uh, uh, adjust and, and combine the DDW consumption with the radiotherapy. And we have similar numbers with, with lung cancers the lung cancer population median survival time is about eight, 10 months. If we, uh, we check the survival time of over 300 lung cancer patients, we go up to 48 months. And in frankly, when we checked the, the gender for females and males with the females, it goes up to over 100 months. So extremely, the women's always responds much better <laughs> to DW than the males. That that's so interesting. So for females, would that mean that they'd respond better to a ketogenic yeah. diet for depleting deuterium? Do, do you have any idea why? I know there's estrogen uh, receptors in, and estrogen has a protective role in many ways, but I, I genuinely don't know the answer. I just wondered if you had any idea why women respond better to deuterium depletion of any kind than men. We had again. We we published another paper when we checked. The mice, uh, how the how the carcinogen agent uh, trigger the expression of a couple of uh, cancer gene, and and what we found that uh, the CMIC gene uh, extremely responded in the female, but not so in the male, and when we treated that mice with a DW from the females from the high expression, the DW reduced very low, uh, the expression of, of the CMIC, but not in the male, uh, male mice. We we are not sure, but maybe, so the, in a, maybe in the females, a uh, couple of genes are more responsive, uh, for example, uh, carcinogen agents are more expressed and when applying DDW, that gene even responding very well, and we can uh, 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 cut down the expression of these genes. And maybe this is the reason, but we need to do several other study to, to know the real reason why the females respond much better to the, to the deuterium depletion than the males. That's very important for working out a protocol because yeah. sometimes people just rush out and buy deuterium depleted water and try and do everything all by themselves. So when you say when you start a depletion protocol, did you say that your cancer patients would start on 85 uh, parts per million um, and then work their way down or do they start at 100 How just in sort of simple ways so that people don't just rush out and try and drink because you can buy 5 ppm uh, deuterium depleted water maybe explain to people a about a little bit about how to use it and how rushing out and just buying it isn't the best way and, and how you need to make a protocol yeah, so th this is one reason that we, we believe that we need to register it as a cancer drug, because in that way, that will be part of the oncotherapy. But we are not at that stage. So if someone has cancer, it's good to look around and, and, and learn about how to use the deuterium depleted water. So based upon our 30 years experience, we, we see that the cancer cells are extremely sensitive for the changing the concentration. Because when somebody starts to consume any type of deuterium depleted water, that cause a, a, a decrease day by day, week by week in the deconcentration in the body. And that means that all the cells have has to adapt 
to the lowering the concentration because we will modify the old biochemical processes by changing the deuterium hydrogen ratio. And luckily the healthy cells can tolerate even the fast reduction of the deconcentration, but the cancer cells are not able to tolerate. But if somebody, for example, consuming for, for three months, 105 ppm deconcentration, at the end of the three months, will not be any change in the deconcentration because the D level reached the equilibrium. The people are eating normal food, breath, maybe all the food contains water with normal deconcentration. So we'll be a level when with 105 ppm, we are not able to modify the DH ratio. At that time, we recommend that the cancer patients should change it for 85 ppm and consume it another two, three months. And depending on the size of cancer, type of cancer, type of conventional therapy, uh, we can we can play it when to change from 105 to 85, when to move forward to 65, 45, 25. And if we are lucky and we we have some knowledge about, we can optimize it. What is the best way in in combination with the existing therapy to get the best results? In general, we can say we can get a three to ten fold increase in median survival time. If if it can be part, DW is part of the of the conventional therapy, and maybe more important that uh, so lots of people became tumor free thanks to the surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hormone therapy, and all these things. But the bad news is everybody goes to the control and they are worried about whether they relapse and they see that the tumor come back. And when the conventional therapy is ended, no any other way to just praying and hoping that there will not be any problem. So we published data with 204 cancer patients who were in remission, they were tumor free, but they were consuming deuterium depleted water. And the cumulative follow up time was over 1000 years, uh, 1025 years. And we lost 13 patients out of that over 1,000 cumulative follow-up time. Two of them is wasn't cancer-related. Eight of them died because they consumed the DW, then they stopped. Maybe once they consumed it for a couple of months, and the average was 4.1 months, one years, they died. Those who are coming back every year, consuming the UTM depleted water for three, four months, they stayed in a remission and they did not relapse. So this would be the best way and the fastest way to reduce the the, the cancer death if we can keep the uh, earlier cancer patients in a remission for 10, 20 years. And what we recommend to consume two months, 105, two months, 85 ppm, have a half year's gap repeated have an eight months gap repeated, and after that, every year repeat that cures for four, six, seven, eight years, and that way, hopefully, the cancer will not come back. Oh no, that's very important because I think even if somebody was listening who's had cancer and never heard of keto diets or deuterium depleted water, the best thing somebody like that can do is to remove the carbs from their way of eating and, and include the deuterium depleted water so it's not just a treatment because I think your water because it's called preventer I was also thinking there's maybe something in the name that once people have um, had their surgery and removed the tumor they still need to continue to manage the deuterium because if they don't it'll just rise again and then they're back again in a metabolic situation where cancer could easily proliferate. So I think that's a really important study as well of a follow-up because sometimes with cancer patients in the UK, they get treated and they're just left to go back to do whatever they used to do and living in the environment and eat the food that caused the cancer in, in the first place. 
So that's um, mm. uh, that's important. Uh, on the subject of prevention, there are always people that uh, want to prevent cancer in the first place. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, there are protocols for healthy people or pe people my age to because we don't need to drink the deuterium depleted water every day. Maybe you want to describe a protocol for younger people or healthy people or, or healthy old older people as well so, so that they can prevent um deuterium buildup but without spending money that they don't need to spend if that makes sense yeah so so to, to prove that uh the deuterium depletion can prevent cancer with a healthy population is very difficult mm -hmm. because it would take lots of time and lots of thousands of people but just that 204 patients who had cancer it means they have a very huge chance to, to relapse and we could prevent the recurrence of the cancer, prove that the depletion can be good to prevent cancer. So for healthy population and the other, uh, talking to your mother that, so the people do not know that when, uh, when the uh, cancer is diagnosed that let's say one centimeter, it took about four or five years that from one single cell, will be a tumor with a size one centimeter. And the bad news is that within that period, years, and nobody knows whether there is cancer or no, millions of cells can leave the primary tumor, go to the bloodstream, and maybe later they can stop somewhere, maybe one single cell. And even that the primary tumor is removed by operation, uh, there is a germ of the cancer cells in the body and five years later maybe the tumor come back again so everybody has cancer cells everybody remove the cancer cells but uh, if we want to reduce the incidence of cancer would be nice would be good to make three four months cure for the healthy population because we don't know uh, what is the size of the group of cells, which may be one, two, three, four, five days or will be diagnosed as a cancer. But that way we can eliminate this small group of cells and we can, again, be, we'll be in a much healthier position because we removed all the potential uh, cancer cells causing or will be diagnosed a couple of years later. And so that's it. We, we, we believe that after 35, 40 years, the incidence of cancer is increasing exponentially. The elder the people, the higher the risk to get cancer. Uh, uh, so those who has a high risk smoking, bad air condition or bad uh, high air pollution, all they think they should re do it every year, every second year. Uh, and then the other population would be good to do it again every year or every second year just to reduce the, because on the other hand, there are big programs to 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 screen the patients for breast cancer, uh, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer. But even we are doing it, that will not reduce significantly the incidence of cancer and will not modify the survival and the number of patients diagnosed with cancer. Okay, I see. So, so maybe for somebody my age, maybe once every two years to do a couple of months of deuterium depletion, and then for my mother who's um seventy nine, she could do it once every year to to prevent cancer because she would do what what you've asked because it's only three months and she can buy the water. She she would be convinced by what you said about the fat and the and the sugar. So it's actually a, a, um a way p people can take their health into their own hands and learn now because I respect you massively for being very scientific about this approach whereas me as an ex-research scientist I haven't got time to wait for you, you know all of this ridiculous bureaucracy and red tape to let the deuterium studies come through I, I, I want to take my health in my own hands now and quite a lot of my audience will and, and because what you're suggesting to do is very simple it's just drink water, deuterium depleted water even if it's 
a couple of uh, months every two years and then to eat a diet that's high in animal that's it's animal fat and pressed oils not not seed oils and things like that and then reduce or eliminate their carbs and if they can't eliminate the carbs completely to eliminate sugar w would that be the simplest way to explain to somebody how they can change their life today yeah, so everybody should find the, the, the optimal dose of the diet we, we ne I never say we, we recommend a cancer patient use a ketogen type of diet so which is sustainable for a long time and and find the best way to 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 the carbohydrate uh, lipid uh, ratio intake yes I also am I right did, did you used to play a lot of basketball am I correct that it was you that's the basketball player because also is exercise and sweating is important for depleting deuterium obviously if somebody's got cancer that that's not going to be possible but for everybody else and exercise is, is that a method that people should and could use as well yeah I, I had to stop it a year ago because my hip so I, I started when I was 11 years old so I started when I was 66 years old. And, and when I, I drink it and I played basketball, I could run a lot. And uh, it was good. But on the other end, we, we made a, a, a study with the athletes and we published that type of data that uh, one group of athletes consume normal water, the other DW. And before and after consuming DW, we made a, a loading test and take a blood sample. And it was clear that those who were consumed DW, the lactic acid appeared much later during the loading. And it, it again proved that the mitochondria uh, work not properly with a lower deconcentration uh, uh, because the uh, uh, TCS cycle work much properly and no uh, lack of oxygen. So it was published and, and clearly showed that that the optimal level for the mitochondria and for the metabolism is not 150 ppm. It must be slower with, with 15 ppm. That's great to know that there's a sports application because I know in terms of finances, there's a lot more money in sport than there is in uh, uh, molecular biology. So I think that's a really interesting study as well. So just to uh, wrap up, I just want to thank you for such a good um introduction and presentation on deuterium where can people find you and the, the, your books on amazon um a, a, do you have any anywhere that people can read more about your work or it, would it just be research gate or do you have a website or wh where can they find yeah. people can can find all the papers on the shomega or research research gate site but the company name is hyd llc for cancer research and development and our website is uh, hyd.hu. So we are Hungarians. We live in, in Budapest in Hungary. Uh, our product is Preventa, which is a drinking water. So we cannot claim anything about it. Uh, people can buy it uh, and order it from different parts of the world. We have a couple of distributors, even in UK, uh, in Australia, uh, Netherlands, United States, China. My book is published in China, in Japanese. Uh, in Japan uh, and and in English. So uh, people go to the PubMed and check out not only our papers, but check out because luckily lots of uh, several great scientists uh, working on that field and then they can find all the papers which uh, was related to that uh, research topic. Oh, that's great because I've bought Preventer water before because I've, I've done a, I always try everything on myself anyway, because there's, there, there could easily be fake deuterium depleted water out there. So that people who are interested, particularly in Europe, know that yours is genuine. Just before we finish, something else I meant to ask you, if people want to test their deuterium levels, what's the best way? Because I know it's complicated with blood, but then we can get breath tests and we can also get a urine test. And if somebody could only have one, which would be the, the best test for them? Because that's another big barrier is deuterium testing facilities. Yeah, we are, we are working on to develop a, a small uh, a medical device. But what we can do, so we can measure the D level of water. And one way people can do it, uh, making a big jar, putting into the minus uh, 
17 or 18 Celsius degree in the fridge and then inhaling into that big jar. And the water will be precipitated on the surface of that, that big jar and they can collect it within only one, micro, one milliliter. And if we got the water, we can measure it and we can uh, uh, say what is the deconcentration. On a... is, is that for a person? Is that the um, breath uh, deuterium? Yeah, thing? yeah, so, yeah. So would you say that that's because I know we can buy those in the UK. I think we actually have to order them from Hungary and then they get shipped and then it's it's a, it's t it's a two step process. But I know some people, some of my clients have been asking about urine tests. And would you say that they have value or or, or would it be in conjunction with a breath test? So what our equipment is, is a laser equipment. That equipment is dedicated to measure the deconcentration of the water. Mm -hmm. right. So we cannot use it for, for uh, saline uh, or, or urine or whatever, because that equipment is not able to, uh, or ready to do that. Uh, of course, there are techniques to, to take out the water from the blood as we have measured, but then we need a mesh spectrometer, which is even more expensive, more complicated and so on. So on a long term, I guess checking the deep level of the breath will we we reflect because we have done a study that somebody consuming DW gradually we can follow day by day as the D level of the breath uh, condensate is reducing. When somebody stop it, it goes back. So the breath should be a good uh, and easy way, uh, a non-invasive way to to follow the deconcentration of the of the body. Oh no, that's great. I just wanted to know that because that's something that in in the future one of my ambitions is to have a deuterium testing facility in the UK. Because when I worked in structural biology, I did lots of different things. We have numerous mass spectrometers just sitting around in the University of Leeds, and and sometimes. Or, or, you know, they always want to collaborate. Universities like to do business. So offering a deuterium uh, testing facility in a university that already has a, a, a very good mass spec it is a very useful way forward for me because that would be for blood. But for, for measuring in the breath, what you need is just laser spectroscopy, isn't it, that you use? Yeah, yeah. It is part of the GMP facility, the production. Yes, it's not a, it's not a complicated piece of biophysical equipment. But anyway, I just wanted to thank you for your time. And it's been superb talking to you. And I'm sure that a lot of people will find this of value. And thank you for everything that you do and for your book and all your research. It's a great help. Thank you. Thank you.